This shows the uh, wide area situational view of WEC uh, under event number two. The operator would basically see a screen that has, has minimal amount of information on it. It shows uh, the current values of the uh, trend charts at each of the critical buses in the system. It shows grid synchronization, the balancing authority alarm limit chart, and bus frequencies. Now, we'll start the event in real time, and the first thing that we'll do is uh, we'll turn on all of the layers so that the operator can see all the events and we'll basically show the uh, frequencies, phase angles, and voltages uh, throughout the grid. These are showing the pass. We have a path violation occurring. We've had a significant disturbance shown by the oscillation here and we have a, a fairly large phase angles between Washington and Oregon and Washington and California. Now the frequencies have now stabilized after the first event but now it appears that there's been a major separation between Canada and uh, United States. And This is shown by the automatic island detection system that recognizes that there has been a separation. Uh, we have an additional set of alarms occurring. Uh, we have uh, uh, frequency alarms, angle alarms, and uh, we have path violation alarms. We'll take a look and we'll see that the frequencies in the United States are running far above 60 Hertz and the frequencies in Canada are running below 60 Hertz. First thing the operator might do is be concerned about what is the cause of this system. So he would, first of all, begin to look at the violations that are occurring. So let's take a first look at the voltage violations. We'll notice that there's a substantial drop in voltage. The system uh, will pause the system and see which voltages are actually causing the issue. And we'll see that these voltages are all occurring around uh, Seattle, Washington. And double clicking, we'll go back to the main page. Um, We'll take a look at the frequencies, and the frequencies will uh, uh, investigate where the frequencies occur. Now, these, this is showing that uh, the all the frequencies in the WEC area suffered this initial disturbance. However, they all are coming back down to a normal uh, range of oscillation, uh, but will accelerate the playback to twice real-time speed and observe what happens when the system separates into two separate machines. And then we'll pause. We'll see this is where the separation occurred. The frequencies were around 60. Uh, all the systems in Canada uh, decayed in frequency. The frequency throughout the U.S. Um, increased. And we can see that by uh, moving the cursor up and down to identify which of the stations in Canada have suffered a, suffered a loss in frequency. We'll jump back now to the, to the main page and take a look at the angle behavior. So the angle behavior is quite interesting. We'll see that all the angles are within 180 degrees initially. Uh, then when the separation occurs, you'll see an interesting phenomenon where the angles begin to diverge from uh, this safe range of 100 and plus or minus 180 degrees and you can see it at this point. We'll go back now to the main page and we'll take a look at the uh, mo oscillating modes of the system and we'll see that the uh, system does show some significant oscillation initially but it's staying within a reasonable set of bounds and the uh, we're below the SQC limit uh, so that it doesn't appear that uh, any oscillation alarms would be triggered. We'll next take a look at the state charts in the system and we'll see that the states uh, of the system uh, again are not inside the green box. The frequency and the voltage need to be inside the green box for the system to be operating properly. We'll jump back to the main page and we'll take a look at the time errors 
And in this particular case, when since we have an oscillation uh, initially, there are initially no time errors. But then when the separation event occurs, we'll see that it will accumulate a substantial amount of time errors uh, both in Canada and in uh, the U.S. You see the time error accumulation is occurring now. Uh, we've lost a tenth of a second already in Canada, and we're accelerating the time error in the U.S. We'll jump back. Uh, we'll take a look at the power plant behavior. There are uh, three power plants that are shown, and we're showing the uh, the actual capacity limit and the current value of the real and the reactive power flow uh, for each of the power plants. Power plant one, power plant two, power plant three. Now the final thing we'll show is we'll look into the more details on the oscillations and we'll play this and you'll see that we see the initial disturbance a substantial amount of oscillations occurring and the oscillation mode is about 0.9 hertz however it's dying out very rapidly let's go back to the main page and now what we'll do is we'll take a look at the the angle differences on the system and we'll activate that layer and now we'll see what the path flows are on on these systems uh, th these are actually shown as the the angle differences um, at the each of these three areas and we can see the initial oscillation occurring and it's basically returning to stable behavior and finally we'll take a look at the uh, the voltages and the phase angle and the frequency at an individual station. So simply by double clicking on this uh, trend object the user can uh, observe the behavior of the system at that particular bus. And double clicking goes back to the main page. What we'd like to do now is to show the angle separation chart.